want to talk about Justice Fish's report. The report is quite damning. I want to read you something that he said. He said, the nature, the extent, and the human cost of sexual misconduct in the Canadian Armed Forces remains as debilitating, as rampant, and as destructive in 2021 as they were in 2015. So you've been in charge that entire time. What does that say about your leadership that it's nothing has changed on this heinous situation? Evan, our commitment to making sure that we root out sexual misconduct and any misconduct has not changed or unwavered in any way. In fact, actually, when we formed government, we knew the magnitude of the work that, that we had. And we have been systematically working towards um, uh, to, to root this out. As you know, something so persuasive uh, like this uh, is, can happen uh, overnight. But the thing is, from our government and personally from myself, how committed we are to making uh, this change is absolutely crucial. From the time that we created our defense policy, which was actually quite uh, encumbersome, where we actually put Chapter number one focused on our people, making sure that we put the policies and resources there. Started working on Bill C-77, um, started working on other initiatives as well, looking at the retention piece, while at the same time um, making the necessary changes. But we know that we have a lot more work, work to do. Right. And this is why we're fully committed and, um, and aggressively moving towards to the changes that are, that are needed right now. But, but Minister, I know you say that. But you've just got an independent report, and I'm going to just read it again. I'm just sorry, but against what you say, the nature, the extent, and the human cost of sexual misconduct in the Canadian Armed Forces remains as debilitating and as rampant and destructive as it was in, in 2021 as it was in 2015. And, and against that, that means whatever you say you've done in six years, literally nothing's changed. And again, he says he's reiterating what the Deschamps report, another Supreme Court justice, wrote in 2015, a report where almost nothing was done on that. You have had uh, repeated uh, situations of over 500 in the last five years, cases of sexual assault in the military. Again, Minister, I got to ask you, isn't this report an indictment of the six years of leadership where literally nothing has changed? Well, Evan, one of the things, as I stated before, we have to be able to fully commit to making sure that this is done. This is something that, that not only as we as a government, but as I told you before, I personally uh, committed to. Um, uh, when you look at the, the allegations that have come forward, whether it's been 10 years, 20 years ago, or, or, even, or even recently, those cases doesn't matter. What we want to do is making sure that any case, any survivors that comes forward, that we fully investigate it. We want to give confidence to the survivors so that they can come forward. That alone also is, uh, is something that we, we tackle to making sure that uh, survivors can come forward. We, we know that we have a lot more work, work to do and we're committed uh, to, but, to but, this. But again, this is something, Evan, but this is something that, to be honest with you, something that can't happen overnight. But we're absolutely committed to this. This is a time not to right. slow down, right? This is a time to actually look at what are the changes that need to be done and continue forward. But, Minister, I know it can't be done overnight, but there's got to be something done after six years. Justice Fish literally said nothing's been done. I, look, I'm just going to go over it again. Um, it can't go on overnight, but, sir... Again, respectfully, you want to give confidence with the military. You've got allegations against General Vance. He was given extension. The CDS that you appointed under allegations. Multiple other leaders under investigation. General Fortin, who led the vaccine appointment, under investigation. The Deschamps report, ignored. Justice Fish saying sexual assault in the military is just as rampant. Why would anyone in the military think you have the credibility to now lead the change six years later? With all due respect, Evan, uh, when it comes to looking at issue, when any time a complaint comes up, whether it's 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or 30 years ago, in some of the cases that you talked about, I'm not gonna talk. I will not talk about the current investigations uh, that are uh, currently underway. But one thing that we committed to from day one is putting our people first. And if you uh, recall from the times that uh, we became minister and our government put the emphasis on this, that we wanted to make sure that we create an inclusive environment for all members. Um, I've had the deputy minister who's actually with me at uh, CFB as Guatemala. She was a reservist in, in, in the Navy talking about the issues that she uh, went through. I know how committed uh, as, as she is. So one of the things when we look at things, for, for example, the it takes a systematic approach to making sure to create culture change. It can't happen overnight, even though I would love to be able to make this all go away. 
something that uh, our, our survivors need. We want to make sure that we could have uh, have the best uh, com join the Canadian Armed Forces without right. having to deal with these type of issues. But, but passing Bill C-77, no, Evan, there's we got, no, we have to take a look at it systematically looking at the work that needed to be done, giving confidence, making sure that we look at putting the proper resources there, getting Bill C-77 passed, working towards that, and many other initiatives okay, that but, we Okay, but hold on, forward. but slow down. I just don't want, don't, don't bulldoze over this stuff because folks might not appreciate that. You're talking about Bill C-77. That is, that was passed in June of 2019. It was the Declaration of Victims' Rights in the military. Sir Justice Fish wrote about that and said it passed in 2019. It has not yet been impl implemented. He said he wants it done. Why was it not done? He, in, in fact, he says, until until it's implemented, only civilian third parties should be able to investigate and prosecute incidents of allegations of sexual misconduct in the military. So first of all, it's an indictment that it hasn't been done. And second of all, do you agree with him in saying that only civilian uh, uh, investigators should pr investigate and prosecute um, incidents of sexual uh, misconduct in the military? First of all, when it comes to Bill C-77, the, um, the uh, Declaration of Victims' Rights, yes, it was passed in, in 2019. The work that has to go behind that, the 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 the, uh, the changes that are needed, the training that is needed, does take time. I know that Judge Advocate General has been working tirelessly on this. I've been getting regular updates on what's needed to be done to move uh, faster, making sure that they have the resources there. Plus, let's not also forget the aspects of the bill. Survivors wanted to be consulted on the type of work that how we're going to be moving forward. That is also currently underway. So that work is actually happening. The Judge Advocate General is working towards it. All, some portions of the bill has already been act, acted upon in, uh, in, in principle, but the total aspect of making sure the training is done, the regulations the, that, that are, are needed are currently taking place. That has to be done right because you can just put a law in place, but then you have to put the resources and, and act everything uh, within but, but it Justice to make Fish, sure just, that that thing is done. So Justice Fish is recommending that the military does not do those investigations as civilian authority does until those are all done. Do you agree with that? So when it comes to the current system right now, uh, even r right now, the, uh, uh, I agree with the, the recommendation, but in the current context, the, the, uh, the, 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 currently the police have the uh, independence to be able to decide how they want to right. uh, uh, proceed, including the prosecution uh, itself. But this is why we're going to be looking at the recommendation on what is actually going to be needed. Do we need, you know, if the military police decides to, to go down that path, then it does. But if the, when more work needs to be done, if we need to make a legislative change, we'll also consider that. Okay, As I stated, everything is currently on the table. But what we're trying to do is how do we move forward uh, quickly? And the most quickest way to move is actually without regulatory or legislative change. Okay. But if it's needed, we will go down that path. Okay, uh, I know you're not implementing all of his uh, 107 recommendations, only 36 for now. Let me just finally drill down on one. One key recommendation is that victims should not have to report incidents of misconduct to their superior. He wrote, I see no reason to delay the removal uh, of the present duty of victims to report their victimization to the chain of command, which impacts their autonomy, and I've been told risks their exposure to reprisals, ostracization, and pressures to withdraw their complaint. Will you immediately make this change so the duty to report does not subject victims to reprisals? You can do that now. In fact, actually, this is one of the things that we're working on with uh, Lieutenant General Jenny Carrion um, and the organization that has been created is to immediately start giving confidence uh, to survivors to come forward. This is also the work that Madam Arbour is going to be doing, is looking at the permanent system that is going to be outside of the chain of command where complaints can come, uh, come to um, that can be investigated uh, if needed, but also to making sure that it, when somebody does come forward, that they're in the decision making, they decide where they uh, uh, how far they, they, they want to go, and plus, most importantly, making sure that they have the support when they do come forward. All right, so uh, so you're working on that one. All right, Minister Sajjan, always good to have you on the program. I got to leave it there today.